Hello there, I'm painting this little winter scene today with acrylics. It's called A Snowy Evening. And if you want to paint along, these are all the colours. So let's get started. I've got my soft round brush and I'm mixing up a muted yellow colour. That's yellow ochre and a little black. Just a little black. Okay, I've already marked the middle of the board and I'm going to begin by painting in a line just below the middle. And just a touch past the centre is where we want the end of the cottage to be. At this stage it's important to get our cottage in the right position so that everything else fits in nicely around it. Just block in a basic shape. Then later on we can tidy it up and add some detail. This bit's going to be the gable end. Alright, I think that'll do for now. Time to paint in some evening sky now and I think I'll use my flat bristle brush. So grab a tiny amount of black and add it to some ultramarine blue. And to start things off, I want to create a fairly light shade here. Okay, we'll go with that. Start blocking it all in. Add a touch more white and it's at this bottom right hand side of the cottage that we'll want to keep the lightest. I should say that I'm painting this on a piece of hardboard which has been primed with two coats of light grey emulsion. There we go. Mixing up a darker shade now for the dark clouds. I've got a wee tip here that might help you. As you tap on the paint, try twisting and turning your brush as you go. Okay, for some variation in the sky, I think I'll mix up some muted cerulean blue. Just wee touches here and there. Gently tap, tap, tap. That's it. Alright, let's paint in some background trees. Making sure that my brush is nice and dry now and that the bristles are well spread out. Grab some darkened ultramarine. and lightly tap in the trees. And as you're doing this you'll find the more that your bristles are spread out the better effect you'll get. Grab some titanium white now and we'll paint in a snowy roof. And this is where you'll begin to see the cottage really take shape. So at the side here I'm adding in a sort of window extension. This is going to be the dining room where everyone will have their Christmas dinner. And to give the cottage some form I'm painting in some dark shaded areas using yellow ochre and black. That's a little more black than we used for the cottage. Mixing up some shadow colour now for the snowy roof. And this is simply a light muted blue.
Let's paint all the windows in now so that everyone can look out at the snow. Just starting off with yellow ochre. Tapping in some white now with my bristle brush, making sure that I've left some of that shadow colour below the tree line. Some on this side as well. Onto the foreground snow and I'm mixing up some light blue snow shadow. And what you can do here is paint on some of the blue first. Then while it's still wet, create little mounds of snow with white all over the garden. Just let these two colours blend together with each other, creating lots of different shades. I want to keep the bottom of the painting here just a, a little darker, so I'm just adding in some more of the snow shadow colour. Alright, we'll leave it at that for now. So I think what I'll do now is add a hint of purple to the background trees. Just a touch of ultramarine mixed in with purple. And just to let you see, this is the one that I normally use, complete with sticky plaster. Gently tap, tap, tap little hints here and there. Let's paint in some wintry looking trees now. And I'm using my fine liner brush now with a mix of black and a little ultramarine blue. And as a wee tip, you only need a little paint on your brush. Sometimes I'm asked why I only seem to paint winter scenes. And I can only say that that's what I like to paint. Just love snowy scenes. And that's all there is to it. So I'm deliberately painting in these two trees so that they lean in towards each other. And this will frame the, the little break on the, in the background trees nicely. And you don't have to be too fussy with the detailing of the, the twigs and branches of these little trees. As they're still in the background, you want to think of them more as impressions. So if you miss painting in a branch or two, that's okay. For the chimney, I'm using the yellow ochre and black mix again, and you can make it a bit wonky to give it some character. Looks like it's leaning over to the right a bit. That looks good. Finish off with a couple of black chimney pots, and we'll begin work on the window light. So I usually start off with orange, and then followed by cadmium yellow, and for darker areas, you can add in some burnt sienna. To define the windows, I'm painting around each one with a, a thin black line to match the door. And the actual window frames are a mix of black and a little yellow ochre. And you just need a very steady hand for this job. Okay, there's another bit done. Brightening up the window light here with cadmium yellow and white. And to create a little bit of a glow around the windows, I'm painting in a mix of yellow ochre and some cadmium yellow.
There we go, it's starting to look like something now. Moving on now, and in most every garden, there's a shed of some description. And I'm simply using our yellow ochre and black mix again to match the cottage. And by the looks of it, it's already leaning over to one side. I think the little old man who lives here will have a bit of work to do to it. Maybe he'll look out his window and notice it and come out and prop it up with a couple of pieces of wood until the springtime. So what does he keep in this shed of his? Well, apart from a rickety old chair that's sitting in the corner, he's probably got his petrol lawnmower in there. He's also got a rusty rake uh, so that he can gather up all the autumn leaves. Oh, and he's got a spade as well, because he likes to do a bit of digging and planting flowers. And he might have half a bag of cement in there that's went hard and it's just too heavy for him to carry out, so he's just left it there. I've mixed up some more ultramarine and black for this little hedge here. And I'm leaving a wee gap for a rickety old garden gate. Here I'm tapping in some more of the purple mix that we used for the background trees. Time to put a wee fence in now. And you want to have some fun with this and give it lots of character. In goes the gate. And I think I'll put a big snow drift up against the gate. There, I'm happy with that. More snow. And you can't have enough snow, sure you can't. I want to put some snow clinging to the, the shrubs around the cottage now. Uh, so I've mixed up ultramarine and just a little white on my bristle brush. Just a tiny amount here and there. All right. Next, we're going to put a big old tree in the foreground. So beginning where you want the trunk to be, start pulling the paint up towards the top of the board, twist in the shape of the trunk as you go. Yellow, ochre and black next. And this is quite a dark mix of yellow, ochre and black. Pull and turn your brush again. And there we've got another trunk. I think I'll make one of the branches point over to the right here, over towards the cottage. Maybe another wee one up here. Put a wee hollow in the trunk uh, with black. I'm going to paint in some impressions of tree bark now, using the yellow ochre and black mix and some white.
and of course we're going to have to have some clinging snow around the base of the tree trunk. For the next tree I'm using a slightly lighter shade of the yellow ochre and black and let's do the same thing here. Start off where you want the trunk to be and then pull the paint all the way to the top twisting out a tree shape. There we go, all we need to do now is put in a few branches. So there's all sorts of little plants and things growing happily at the foot of these two trees. Let's tap them all in with more for ultramarine and black mix. And again, you don't need a lot of paint on your brush when you're doing this. Gently tap, tap, tap. To finish off the areas around the foot of the two trees here, I'm adding in some colour with cerulean blue. And just a little snow detail here and there with white. The snow on the chimney and the windowsills is simply white with just a hint of ultramarine. Some touches of orange on the shrubs. And I like to paint the snowflakes individually. That way I have control over where the snow is falling. And a real easy way is for the far away snow you paint small dots and for the close up snow you paint larger dots. Well, I think this painting is just about finished. I hope you've enjoyed it and I've given you some tips and ideas for your own paintings. So until the next time, take care and thanks for watching.